Okay, we're going to do a simple antibody identification. We have our panel antigram here. This is provided by the manufacturer. Each of the cells that have been put into the panel have been phenotyped for all of these antigens. Actually, probably for quite a few more, but these are the more common ones that we're going to use. We are going to have all of our patient information logged onto our antibody antigram. Before we start our testing, we want to be able to compare the antigram that we are recording our results on with the tube of the patient. We have recorded all of our reactions over here. We have our immediate spin, our 37 degree incubation. And then our final phase, which is our AHG, or anti-human globulin, uh, also commonly called Coombs. So our AHG phase, we have our results recorded. And anything that was negative is going to get check cells. The check cells are simply a antibody-coated cell that we add to make sure that we actually remember to add our anti-human globulin reagent and also to make sure that we adequately washed away plasma so that the anti-human globulin was not inactivated by residual plasma antibodies. So the way we do a rule out is we look at our negative cells and any of the antigens that are positive on that cell are ruled out because they did not react. So if it is positive on the cell, we can rule it out as not the cause of our antibody. That's oversimplistic, I know that. We'll get back to what happens when antibodies don't behave. But this is a straightforward, very simple one. Now we do need to remember that there are certain antibodies which dose, meaning that they have to be ruled out on a double dose cell or a homozygous cell meaning they have to be alone on the cell. So I like to circle my antithetical pairs. Makes it easier for me to keep track and make sure that I've ruled everything out appropriately. So my C's and my E's, and I come down here, and my Duffy's, my kids, the M and the N are antithetical, and the S and the S. So I have six sets of pairs. These must all be ruled out on a homozygous cell. So I'm going to select my first negative cell, which is this one right here. On the computer, I'm going to color it just so that I can keep my eyes on the correct line. When I'm doing this on paper, I actually put a ruler underneath of it. It is very easy for all of these pluses and minuses to make you kind of cross-eyed, and it's very, very easy for you to visually get off a line. So it's I always put something underneath it to make sure that I'm looking at the correct line. So we're going to start with our antibody rule out. We're going to pick our first negative cell, negative in all phases. We're going to start with the D. The D is positive. It does not dose because there is nothing for it to dose with. It, there is no little D, so I can mark off my D. Now my big C and my little C go together. My big C is all alone. It is homozygous, which means it is a double dose, which means double dose, and I can draw a double line. My little c is negative, so the antigen's not present, so I can't do anything with that one. My e is another pair. My big E and my little e are both present, which means it is a heterozygous cell, which means it has a single dose of antigen, so it gets a single line. My vel is negative, my CW is negative, my cal is negative. Can't rule out unless the antigen's positive. So my Chilano is positive, or my little K. My little K. My KPA is negative. My KPB is positive. 
My JSA is negative, so I can't rule out. My JSB is positive. There it goes. My Duffy A and my Duffy B are another pair. Again, both are present. So it is a heterozygous cell. A single dose of each antigen means it gets a single line. The same is true of my JKA and my JKB. So single dose from the heterozygous, single line. Lewis A is negative. Lewis B is positive. Here's my P1. My M and my N pair up. Again, it is a heterozygous, so single line for a single dose. And the same on my S. Heterozygous, single dose, single line. My Lutheran A is negative, so I can't do anything with that. My Lutheran B is positive, so I can rule that one out. My XGA is positive, so I can rule that one out. And we are done with our first negative cell. So we'll go back and we will unhighlight that one. Our next cell is positive reaction, so we don't do anything with that right now. We find our next negative cell. We're going to highlight it. And we're going to mark it so we can see which one we're dealing with. Okay. In this one, my big C is negative, so my little C is all by itself, meaning it is homozygous, so it has a double dose. So a double dose gets a double line, and I can rule that one out. My big E is positive all by itself. It is homozygous, so it is a double dose, and a double dose gets a double line. My little e is negative, so I can't do anything further with it. Vel and CW are both negative. The Kel is negative, so can't do anything there yet. KP, uh, Chilano's already ruled out. KPA is negative. KPB is already ruled out. JSA is negative, can't do anything with that. JSB is already ruled out. Now we're at our Duffies, Duffy A and Duffy B, that's one of our pairs. So Duffy B is all by itself. It is homozygous. One dose from mom, one dose from dad gives me a double dose. And a double dose gets a double line. My JKA and JKB are a pair. My JKA is all by itself, meaning it's homozygous. So it is a double dose, so double dose, double line. Lewis A is negative, so I can't do anything with that. Lewis B is already ruled out. P1 is already ruled out. My M and my N go together. This is my pair. So my M is all alone. So that means that it is homozygous, double dose double line. My S and my S are still heterozygous. I don't get a second line just because I have a second heterozygous cell. I need to rule these out on homozygous cells. So even if I have multiple heterozygous, I really should, if at all possible, find a homozygous cell to rule out on. So these are still just a single dose and a single line. My Lutheran A is negative. My Lutheran B is already ruled out, and my XGA is already ruled out. So that's our second negative cell done. So we'll go back and uncolor that one. We'll find our next negative cell, which happens to be the next one down. Again, we're going to highlight it so that we can see which one we're dealing with. My D is already ruled out. My big C is negative. My little C is already ruled out. My big E is negative. So big E is negative. That means that little E is all by itself, meaning it's homozygous. So double dose. And double dose is a double line. 
My VEL and my CW are both negative. My KEL is negative. My Chilano is already, or little K, is already ruled out. My KPA is negative. My KPB is already ruled out. My JSA is negative. My JSB is ruled out. My Duffy A is negative, and so is my Duffy B, so I can't do anything with these. My JKA is already ruled out, and my JKB is negative. Lewis A is negative. Lewis B is already ruled out. P1 is already ruled out. My M is negative, meaning that my N is all by its little lonesome, so it is homozygous. One N from mommy, one N from daddy, double dose, homozygous, double dose gets a double line. And I've ruled out my N. My S and my S, little s, are both negative, so I can't do anything with that. My Lutheran is negative, Lutheran A. Lutheran B is ruled out, and XGA is already ruled out. So we are done with that cell. We then go down to the next cell that is negative. And again, remember, negative in all three phases. If there are any reactions there, you cannot use it. It's to be negative in all three phases. So my D is negative. My C's are both already ruled out. My E is negative. Big E is negative. Little E is already ruled out. My VEL and my CW are negative. My KEL is negative. Still can't rule it out. My little K is already ruled out. My KPA is negative. My KPB is already ruled out. My JSA is negative. My JSB is already ruled out. My Duffy A is positive here, but again, it is still a heterozygous reaction. So I still only have a single line for my single dose. However, on my kid, my JKA is negative, which means that my JKB is double dose here. So double dose gets a double line, and it's ruled out. Here's my Lewis A. It can go away. My Lewis B is negative. My P1 is negative. My M is already ruled out. My N is already ruled out. My little s's are still heterozygous. Have to have a homozygous to rule them out. They are still heterozygous, still single dose, still single line. Lutheran A is negative. Lutheran B and XGA are both already ruled out. So there's our next one. And I know it seems very tedious to do this, and on something, these simpler ones, where I have a lot of negative cells, it's very easy to get these panels to work. But when we start getting into some of these that have a much higher frequency antigen, or especially in those that have multiple antigens, you have to do the rule out one cell at a time, every single negative cell. If you just look at the positives and find what pattern it fits, you're going to miss something. So you actually do have to go through and do this every single time. Our next two cells are positive, so I can't do anything with those. So I find my next negative one. And I highlight it. And then we go back. And I will say, honestly, by the time I get here, I start looking for what's missing. But we're going to go through each one because I want you to really pay attention. So the D is negative. The C is negative. My little C is already ruled out. My big E is negative. My little E is already ruled out. My VEL, my CW are both negative. My KEL is negative, so I can't rule it out yet. My little K is already ruled out. My KPA is negative. My KPB is already ruled out. My JSA is negative. My JSB is positive, but it's already ruled out. Now here's my Duffy's. Okay, my Duffy A is all by itself. 
It is homozygous, which means it is a double dose, and my double dose gets a double line. My Duffy B is negative. My JKA is positive. It's homo, but it's already ruled out, so we're good. My JKB is negative. My Lewis A is negative. My Lewis B is already ruled out. My P1 is already ruled out. My M is already ruled out, and my N is zero. Here we have our little and big S. Little S is negative, so big S is homo. It's all by itself, which means it has a double dose, and a double dose gets a double line. Little S is negative, Lutheran A is negative, Lutheran B is already ruled out, and XGA is negative. So we are done with that cell. So here is this cell. And we're going to highlight it so that we can see what it is. D is negative, C is negative, little c is already ruled out, big E is negative, little e is already ruled out. VEL and CW are both negative. KEL is negative, I can't rule it out. My little k is already ruled out. KPA is negative, I can't rule it out. KPB is already ruled out. JSA is negative, JSB is already ruled out, both of my Duffies are already ruled out, my kids are ruled out, my Lewis's are ruled out, my P is negative, my M and my N are ruled out, my big S is negative, so my little s is homozygous all by itself, meaning it has a double dose of little s, so a double dose is a double line, and I've ruled out little s. My Lutheran A is negative, my Lutheran B is already ruled out, and my XGA is negative, so I can't do anything with that. And we've got one last cell here to deal with. Won't take us but a second. But like I said, you do have to go through every one of these cells, and you do have to make sure that you actually rule everything out and don't just rule in. You've got to do this rule out. Um, my RHs are all negative. My VEL is still negative. My CW is negative. I can't rule out KEL. My Chilano or my little K is negative. My KPA is negative. KPB is already ruled out. JSA is negative. JSB is already ruled out. Both of my Duffies are ruled out. My kids are ruled out. My Lewis was ruled out. My P. All of my M, N, and S are ruled out and ruled out homozygous. Lutheran is not there, so nothing I can do. And my Lutheran B and XGA are all ready ruled out. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at where my positives are. So this is a positive cell. These two actually here are positive cells. So we'll color them. Yeah, that's a little hard to read through. Let's, let's go with blue. I can read that. Okay. Those are positive. And then here is my other positive. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look and see if my pattern fits anything. And it's very obvious that it fits the Kel. So to definitively call it Kel, I have to have three cells that are reacting that are positive for the antigen. And then I have to have three cells that are non-reactive that rule everything else out. So we've ruled everything else out except for our Vel are CW, KPA, JSA, and Lutheran A. These are low-frequency antigens. Many panels don't have any of them on there. Uh, this one actually has a Lutheran A, but notice it's on a positive cell. So we can't truly rule it out 
But in reality, we don't hunt for them. We don't go look for panel cells and run extras to try and rule those out. Where those really come in is if we have a panel that has a weird reaction, something that's off the pattern, or more commonly that our panel was negative, we ruled everything out, everything looked good, and then we get a cross match that comes up incompatible. So those five antigens, if they don't get ruled out, we we just kind of pretty much call it, oh, that's okay, and we're done. Uh, we only really worry about them when they are positive on cells that are reacting. So we're good. We have three positive Kel cells, so we have identified this as a Kel. The one thing to remember is that we had to run a screen before we ran our panel. So if something doesn't get ruled out here, or if you don't have enough positive cells, you can always go back and look at your screen as well.